Hey guys, I'm Michelle Hickey. I help creatives like you start and grow businesses using your gifts so that you can support the lifestyle you've been dreaming about. One of the gifts that we creatives are blessed with is an abundance of ideas. We're not like regular people who only get good ideas in the shower. We get them all day, every day. The good in this is that we can't ever run out of great ideas. But the bad is we can't possibly pursue them all. So we have to become really choosy and smart about the ones that we're gonna go after. In this video, we're gonna go through five actionable steps that we can take anytime we have a brilliant idea to make sure that that idea is going to be validated and that it's gonna be worth our time to pursue. Step one. Give it the 24 hour test. Where are my list makers at? Anytime you get a new idea, write it down. Whether it's pen and paper or a list that you keep on your phone, anytime an idea pops in your head, just get it down somewhere. Once that 24 hour period is up, go back to it, revisit it, and ask yourself, does this sound as good as it did when I first wrote it down? I know for me, sometimes my brilliant ideas can be tainted by the circumstances that were going on when I came up with it. For example, if I'm listening to show tunes, every idea under the sun is gonna sound like it is the best idea ever, and you should definitely go for it. Other times you may have had too much coffee or a little too much champagne, and those things can just kind of taint our judgment as to whether or not we should actually be pursuing these ideas. Two is to define your successful outcome. So you've got your idea, you gave it the 24 hour test and it passed, but now you need to determine what the final outcome of pursuing this idea is going to be. You need to be able to articulate. Once you've executed on this great idea that you've had, what is going to be the thing that makes you say, this was a success or this wasn't a success? It's time to get out that pad of paper again or your notebook and your phone. Now that you have that ready to go, you need to write down this phrase. My idea will be successful if, and then you need to fill in the rest of that. Here are some examples of things that you can fill in. My idea will be a success when somebody buys my product. My idea will be a success when I help somebody make a change. My idea will be a success when I get somebody to sign up to become part of my community. This step is super important because if we don't know where this idea is leading, we're never gonna get there. Step three is research. Now is the time to share your great idea with other people, but not just any people. I don't know about you, but when I have a good idea, I tend to share it with the people who love me and support me the most. My parents, my husband, my friends who are really, really nice. But what do all these people have in common? None of them are ever going to buy a product from me. And I'm guessing the same might be for you. The people who are closest to us tend to not be our audience. These are not the people that we should be talking to. Who are our people? Who are we going to be serving? Who are we creating a product for? Who are we creating a service for? We need to find these people. We need to start talking to them. We need to start interacting with them. And we need to start asking them a lot of questions. But above all, we need to figure out where they're struggling. So you might be asking, okay, Michelle, that's great, but where are all of these people that I need to connect with? And believe it or not, it's a little bit easier than you might think. Depending on who your people are, there might be spots that only you know about because only you know about that particular topic. For example, I have a friend, Stacy, in my mastermind group who caters to people who are looking to train horses that they own. I would have no idea where to go search for those people. But since Stacy has her own horses, I'm guessing that she might be aware of some associations or communities that people belong to who are fellow horse lovers. But if you are really starting from scratch, maybe you're going to serve an audience that you really don't know anything about, the best place to start is on Facebook. Facebook has tons of groups and it's so easy to search for exactly what you're looking for. I would encourage you to join multiple Facebook groups so that you can get a really clear picture of the interests, the struggles, all the ins and outs of the person that you are trying to reach. The more exposure you can get, the more you're gonna be able to learn about these people and how to better serve them. Another great place to look are online forums. These might take a little Googling but just go in and Google exactly what you're looking for. So if your ideal client is a bride, search for online forums for brides-to-be. A third place to look is on Twitter. We all know what hashtags are. Go into Twitter and search for a hashtag that a person that you might be looking to serve would be looking for. 
people actually go on Twitter and put out questions hoping that people are going to answer them. If you are searching for a particular hashtag, you're gonna be able to find them really easily. And even if you're not able to answer that question right away, you can at least see what is being asked and where there are needs that need to be met. So once you're in these Facebook groups or these online forums, hop in and start observing like crazy. Hop into those conversations. This isn't the place where you're gonna share your great idea, but it is a place where you can observe research, and listen to what other people have to say. Step four is to ask. At this point, your idea may have morphed into something that was different than how it started, and that's totally okay. That'll just mean that it's stronger than it was when you first started. But now you're gonna take that idea to the next level and make it the best it could possibly be. In this step, you're gonna create a survey to better refine your vision and to get clear answers about the direction that you should take in its development. Creating a survey is really easy, especially if you use any of the great websites that are out there to help you. My two favorites are Typeform, which is a super user-friendly site that I just love working on, and the other that you may have heard of is called SurveyMonkey. You wanna start by asking some really easy multiple choice questions to help you figure out what options people might be more interested in. But you also wanna be sure to include an open-ended question so that you give the person who's taking the survey a chance to really voice their opinion. And chances are, if they're taking the survey, they have an opinion that they're gonna to wanna to share. It's a really smart idea to leave an optional space at the bottom where the person taking the survey can leave you their name and email address so that they can be alerted when this project or idea comes to life. The next part of this step is to start a spreadsheet or a list with the names of some of the people that you may have connected with in step three, when you were in those online forums and in the Facebook groups and doing your Twitter hashtag research. You'll also wanna add anyone in your professional circles that you can think of who might be able to share their voice and their opinion and who might be qualified to weigh in. Once you have a pretty good looking list, anywhere from 30 to 50 people will be a good place to start. Send that survey out to them, along with a personal note, letting them know why you're sending them the survey and why you thought that they might be a good person to help answer the questions on it. If you feel like that spreadsheet you've created or that list you've created isn't quite as bulky as you'd like it to be, think about sharing the survey out to your social media networks. Step five is to validate. It's time to take your idea out for a test drive. Now, some of you are gonna think I'm crazy for what I'm about to suggest, but I want you to go back to step two for a minute. What was that successful outcome that you wrote down? Was it getting someone to buy your product or was it getting someone to sign up for something? Even though your idea is not completely brought to life yet, you're gonna ask people to pay you for it before you get started. Yep. I said it. You are going to ask people to give you money for something that you have not actually created yet. You may feel a little bit funny doing this or asking for this, but if you've gotten to this point and you've put all of this effort into doing your research and connecting with these people and really becoming part of these communities, then you've shown that you are in this for the long haul and you should know in your heart that especially when you're about to take money from somebody before you have this created, that you are gonna go above and beyond. Put your all into making this the best product or service ever. All right, so now let's get into the logistics of this. You need to collect money from people so you can start executing on your idea. But how do you collect that money? First way you've probably heard of, it's called Kickstarter. Post your idea on Kickstarter and start raising the funds that you need to create your product or service. You can also do this on your own website. So if you already have your own website and you have a new product that you know that you're going to create, you can just create a single sales page with all of the information that your audience needs to know about the product that you're creating, the research you've done, who it's for, and a little button where they can pay to sign up to be the first ones to get their hands on your product or service. If you don't have a website yet, please do not let this hold you back. You can sign up for a free trial on a number of drag and drop website creators that are so easy to use. And if you're willing to spend an afternoon putting this page together, you can have it up and running, including having it connected to a payment processor. I use Weebly for one of my websites and find it really easy to use, but you can also check out sites like Squarespace or Wix. All of these sites are really user-friendly and I would highly suggest hopping in and utilizing them so that you can create this sales page. 
Once you make that first sale, you have officially validated this idea and you can move forward with confidence. At this point, not only will you have had lots of feedback on what you should and shouldn't do in creating your product or service, but you'll have created a network of people who are either willing to buy this product or service from you, buy it somewhere down the line, or just support you and help you promote it. Not to mention that you didn't spend all this time and energy on creating this new idea for something that people may not have even wanted or needed. If all of this sounds a little bit overwhelming to you and it seems like a lot of work and a lot of effort to put in, know that you're going to be putting in all of this work and all of this effort anyway if you're going to be creating a product. So why not start with knowing that what you have is actually going to sell rather than pour all of this energy into something that might fall flat or might not make any sales. I can tell you from experience that feeling does not feel good. This process can also move a lot more quickly than you're thinking. And in fact, this video in itself was prompted by one of my community members, Lizzie, who emailed me and who was looking for a little bit of advice on this idea she had and what should be her first step in bringing it to life. And I walked her through all of these steps and in less than a week, five days later, she had already connected with people, made her spreadsheet, created her survey and gotten the survey out to them. So this doesn't need to be something that you take months and months creating. You can choose to do it that way, especially if you want to dive deeper into, into becoming part of these communities that you're looking to serve. But you can also move just as quickly as Lizzie did and start crushing it right away. If you have creative friends who are those people who are always coming to you and saying, I have the next best great idea, share this video with them. I guarantee you that if one of my friends saw this video, I would be the person that they were sending it to because I am that person who has way too many ideas and never enough time to make them all happen. These are the steps that you need to follow to make at least some of those dreams into a success. If you have any other questions about going through this process or validating one of your brilliant ideas, send me a message at any time. Leave a message below or shoot me an email. I'm always happy to chat with you. 